The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich yet delightfully mild. It's delicious, and it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese food. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality. Velveeta, made only by Kraft. Well, let's see what's doing in the great Gildersleeve city of Summerfield. Along about this time every morning, the bulky figure of the water commissioner emerges from City Hall and ambles along the tree-lined walk that takes him to Peavy's pharmacy. You're right, George. Peavy has a lot of rabbits in his window. Well, Easter's next Sunday. The rabbits look better in the winter than hot water bottles. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? You know, Peavy, that's quite a display of chocolate rabbits you have in the window. Mm, I think so. Why don't you get live ones? Well, if I had live ones, I'd have to feed them. These feed me. Have a bite. <laughs> What's that? They're pretty good chocolate. Go ahead, bite off his other ear. Well, I love chocolate. I <laughs> think I will break off a chunk. Sorry, rabbit. Mmm, <laughs> almonds. Mm, right, yeah, it's the best part of the rabbit. <laughs> Say, I, I think I'll take home a bag of these. Very well. I've sold a lot of candy this way. Oh? But I'm getting pretty sick of eating rabbits. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, just charge it, Peavy. Well, well. Uh, how about some candy for your girlfriend? Well, I have been seeing a lot of Miss Olson recently, but uh, I thought I'd send her an Easter lily. Well, she can't eat that. Oh. <laughs> oh. I strongly recommend the king-size chocolate rabbit. You might say, take a bunny to your honey. <laughs> <laughs> mm, uh -uh. I'm going to take candy. I'll take something elegant like chocolate covered cherries. Very well. Say, isn't that your niece's husband out front? Yeah, that's Bronco looking over your rabbit display. <laughs> I'm not going to need another one if he comes in here. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Bronco. Bronco, how are you, my boy? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'll take a package of gum here, Mr. Peavy. Very well. How are things going at the plant? Oh, just great. Uh, Peavy, I guess you heard Bronco's boss is sending him to Paris as branch manager. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my boss is a great guy. Yeah, I'd like to do something real nice for him. Care to take him a chocolate rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Peavy, you're kidding. <laughs> uh, Bronco, have you ever entertained your boss? Oh, I couldn't entertain Mr. Hammond. He's a big shot. He lives out at the country club. <laughs> What could I do to entertain him? Well, you might invite him out to the house to meet the little family. Those fellows enjoy a little home cooking, don't they, Peavy? Mm, I do. I'd put Mrs. Peavy up against the country club any time. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. I don't think I should invite him over. He might think it's a little dull. No, Bronco, you are making a mistake. You could have an interesting little dinner party. You can invite me. Well, it... And I can invite Miss Olson. Her accent would give the party kind of a classy flavor. And I could bring Mrs. Peavy. What's that? She used to play the musical song. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peavy, I'm serious. Well, Mrs. Peavy used to be serious about the musical song. She nearly got a tryout with Major Bowles. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, I don't think Marge could handle such a big dinner party. <laughs> well, I was only judging, Bronco. Mrs. Peavy's out of town anyway. Well, Marge could get Bertie to help her. Yeah, I'd be glad to come. Yeah, I've entertained the mayor. Well, I would like to know the boss socially. You just invite him and leave everything to me. Well, this is very nice of you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, should Marjorie call Miss Olson? No, yeah, I'll take care of that. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Hammond will enjoy an evening like that, won't he, Peavy? Well, if Miss Olson's there, he'll enjoy the evening all right. 
Well, that's why I'm inviting her. I'm doing a favor for Bronco. And it might turn out to be a favor to Mr. Hammond. P.V. Yes, Bertie, I'm home. How about that was you? Bertie, can you leave the kitchen a minute? Yes, sir. I don't think that stew's going to miss me. Stu? Hey, Bertie, how'd you like to cook for Mr. Dudley Hammond? Uh-oh, you mean I'm fired? We don't have to have stew tonight. <laughs> no, you're not fired. We can never get along without you. <laughs> I know that, but somebody might think they can. <laughs> no, indeed. What I have in mind is... You might like to help Marjorie with her dinner party. Oh, I'd like that. But Miss Marjorie was over here and she didn't say anything about a dinner party. Well, it was my idea. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, I suggested it to Bronco. Sort of promote him with his boss. Yes, sir. With Bertie in the kitchen, Mr. Bronco's practically promoted. <laughs> that's the spirit. Bertie's modest. That's one thing I can say for me. I'm modest. Yeah. But when Mr. Dudley Hammond tastes Bertie's cooking, his eyes are going to light up like a pinball machine. Oh, I know we can count on you. Unky? Oh, hello, Marjorie. Unky, Bronco just phoned, and he has the most marvelous idea. We're having a dinner party for Mr. Hammond. Oh, wait a minute. That's my idea. Oh? Well, anyway, it's a wonderful idea. Hi, everybody. Hello, Leroy. What's your wonderful idea? Oh, one of mine. Mr. Gilsey wants me to do the cooking. Oh, would you, Bertie? What's cooking? Just imagine, Unky. He accepted our invitation. You bet. Who accepted what invitation? Uh, Leroy, this doesn't concern you. If it has anything to do with eating, it concerns me. Oh. <laughs> you can go to a movie and have dinner at Mr. Peavy's drugstore. Well, I'll go to a movie, but I won't have dinner at Mr. Peavy's. I'm so full of chocolate rabbits now, I could hop. <laughs> well, I'll treat you to dinner out someplace. Well, why are you paying to get rid of me? I'm giving a dinner party for Bronco's boss at Marjorie's house, and Bertie's going to cook it. Get him. He says he's giving it. <laughs> well, Unky did give us the idea, and it's a very good one. Yeah, thank you, my dear. Well, I have to run home. I want to get the house ready for tomorrow night. I'll be over to help you, Miss Marjorie. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Goodbye, Unky Leroy. Goodbye, my dear. So long. How many's going to be at the party, Miss Gilsey? You're just Bronco's boss, and I've invited Miss Olson. For him? For me, young man. And just to liven up the evening. Oh, brother, you live dangerously. He sure does. What do you mean? Mr. Hammond's a handsome bachelor. I'll say I've seen him. Oh? I went out to the plant with Bronco. Mr. Hammond was dictating to three secretaries. Three secretaries? And none of them knew what he was saying. <laughs> they just sat looking at him. He was so handsome, he had him practically swooning. <laughs> Leroy, you're exaggerating. Every time he'd say, dear sir, they'd go, ah. <laughs> Bronco tells me when women come around, Mr. Hammond, he runs. Which way? <laughs> Away from them. That's why he's still a successful bachelor. Oh, Mr. Gilsley, don't have much to worry about. No, of course not. I could see that when Miss Olson was over here last week. Miss Gilsleaf had a mumbling to herself. <laughs> she wasn't mumbling to herself. She was speaking French. Now, Leroy. Uh, one of those other languages. That's it. Mr. Gilsleaf got her talking to herself in five different languages. <laughs> now, Bertie. Yes, sir. He's got her talking to herself in French, Swedish, Italian, Spanish, and turtle dove English. You mean pigeon English? No, when she talks to Mr. Gilsey, she talks in turtle dove English. No, Bertie. Miss Gilsey, do you know how she talks to you? Yes, Bertie. That's right, she talks to you in turtle dove English. <laughs> <laughs> Your table looks very pretty, doesn't it, Marie? Lovely. You're a very charming hostess, Marjorie. Well, thank you. Oh, you folks don't have to say those nice things. Marge is going to feed you anyway. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what's keeping Mr. Hammond. He'll be along. When I left the plant, he was talking to Washington on the phone. Oh, it would still be a nice party if he didn't come at all. Oh, Marie, you just want to be with Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, uh, Marie, we mustn't make Mr. Hammond feel like a fifth wheel. I'm so glad Unky and Marie are here. We, we wouldn't know how to entertain him, would we, Bronco? No, it's not easy to do. Mr. Hammond's strictly business. Well, there he is, Kitty. Oh, yes, Bronco, you go to the door. Well, why don't we both go to the door? Well, I think you should go. We could all go. Now, Bronco, get the door! Bertie, please. I'll go. Does the house look all right, Unky? Hey, Marjorie, relax. Well, Mr. Hammond. Hello, Bronco. Oh, welcome to our little home. Here, let me take your hat and coat. And your gloves. Thank you. I hope I'm not late. Oh, no, no. The others are just early. <laughs> <laughs> Say, he's not as old as I thought he'd be You mean a man that young owns a big plant? Well, I looked younger than that when I started running the water department Yeah, right in here, Mr. Hammond Well, I want you to meet my wife, Marjorie uh, I've heard a lot about you, Marjorie I've been looking forward to meeting you, Mr. Hammond And this is Miss Marie Olson How do you do, Mr. Hammond? How do you do? What a charming accent Thank you. Yes, and this is Marjorie's uncle, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mr. Gildersleeve? It's a pleasure, Mr. Hammond. You've no doubt heard of me. I'm city water commissioner. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, I've heard of you, Silversleeve. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gildersleeve. Throckmorton P. Oh, isn't that what I said? <laughs> well, I've been working too hard, Bronco. You'll have to assume more of my duties. <laughs> Anything you say, Mr. Hammond. Is that a promotion, Bronco? Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> well, uh, let's everybody sit down and visit before dinner, huh? Yeah, good idea. Uh, Marjorie, I imagine you kids hate to give up this cozy little place for Paris. Oh, no. We're so indebted to you for the opportunity to go, Mr. Hammond. Yeah, Marjorie's so right. <laughs> well, Bronco's earned it. The trip to Paris is all Marjorie has been able to talk about. Miss Olsen, I... I can't quite place that delightful accent of yours. May I sit here by you? If you wish. I was going to sit there. <laughs> Obviously, you've spent quite a lot of time abroad. Oh, yes. She speaks five languages. Marie's a very interesting conversationalist. Mm -hmm. Do you two converse in foreign languages? Well, I only speak English. <laughs> but I used to speak a little Latin when I was in high school. You know, I guess all of us had to take a little Latin, eh, Mr. Hammond? It certainly helped me when I was setting up my branch offices in Europe, especially in Paris. Do you speak French, Mr. Hammond? Oh, a little. Je suis sûr que mon français n'est pas aussi bon que le vôtre. Oh, au contraire. Vous parlez très bien. Well, merci, mademoiselle. Show off. <laughs> Say, that's... That's very good, Mr. Hammond. Hey, Marjorie, I hope you'll forgive me for brushing up a little. Well, I thought it was charming. Well, that's only because Miss Olsen is so charming. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hammond. I thought he ran from women. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm indebted to you for having Miss Olsen here tonight, but of course, that's the thoughtful hostess. Oh, Mr. Hammond. Yeah, we're glad you're having a good time. Isn't this working out wonderfully, Anki? Oh, yes. Uh, dinner, sir. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Uh, shall we go into the dining room? I'm sure everybody's starved. Oh, uh, Mr. Hammond, I think Marge is seating you, our guest of honor, next to Miss Olson. Zeke. Wonderful. My arm, Miss Olson. This is like having dessert before I get to the table. <laughs> How very corny. Uh, may I escort you to the table, Marge, honey? Uh-huh. Come along. I'll take your arm, too, Anki. No, no. Go ahead. I'll ring up the rear. I'm not only a fifth wheel, I'm a flat tire. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Tonight, I want to tell you about a dandy sandwich that can do double duty. It's glamorous enough to be a perfect snack for guests. And it's a fine family main dish, delicious and nourishing, because you make it with Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. The two ounces of Velveeta you put into this sandwich give you more of milk's vital food values than an eight-ounce glass of milk. More protein, calcium, phosphorus as much riboflavin, and more vitamin A. We call this sandwich Tomato Shrimp Delight, and here's all you do to make it. First, toast some slices of whole wheat bread and spread them with Kraft mayonnaise. Top each piece of toast with a slice of tomato, and on the tomato, 
arrange several cooked shrimp. Then put a generous slice of Velveeta over the shrimp and slide the sandwiches into a 350-degree oven just long enough for the Velveeta to melt. What a wonderful combination of flavors that is. The fresh garden flavor of the tomato, the tang of the shrimp, and the fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor of Velveeta. Delicious, and a perfect main dish for Lent. Make some soon. Tomorrow, take home a two-pound loaf of smooth-melting Velveeta for all kinds of good, hot main dishes and for hearty cold sandwiches and snacks, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the finest quality cheese food you can buy, and it's made only by Kraft. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. His heart may be in the right place, but sometimes his head isn't. Even he will admit he didn't use the best judgment when he brought his girlfriend to a dinner party for Bronco's bachelor boss. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it, Leroy. He practically monopolized Marie all evening. Yeah? You should have gone to the movie with me, Unc. Then you couldn't have seen him beat your time. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bertie? Mr. Bronco phoned and said he was on his way over here to talk to you. Well, he probably wants to apologize for the way that boss of his acted last night. Bertie, didn't you think he was obnoxious? No, sir, to tell the truth, I can't rightly say he was. What? Mr. Hammond told me my cooking was a gastronomic delight, and that's not obnoxious. <laughs> well? Yes, sir. So you know what I think? Mr. Hammond's a fine man. Well, I thought your dinner was fine, too, Bertie. Yes, sir, that's what Mr. Hammond said last night. You're too late, Uncle. He beat you to the punch again. Uh, Mr. Hammond's one fine man. <laughs> He's a show-off, a flatterer, and an all-round sneaky-type character. He got Marie off in the corner and talked all night. Why didn't you do your stuff, Unc? Why didn't you sing Asleep in the Deep? That always gets attention. <laughs> Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep, so... Oh, my wh- goodness. You sick, Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> Unc, try to cheer up, Unc. I don't need any cheering up. I'm just glad last night's over and I won't see any more of that dapper Dudley Hammond. I'll get it! Uh, never mind, Bertie, I'll go. It's probably Bronco. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, come in, Bronco. Hi, Leroy. Hi, has the boss made you a VP yet, Bronco? No, no, but the evening was quite a success thanks to Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, forget it, Bronco. And I mean forget it. Oh, no, you deserve the credit. You know, if you hadn't brought Miss Olson, the evening would have been a complete dud. Yeah, well... Yeah, but as it turned out, the boss had a wonderful time. In fact, uh, he wants to take us out now. Great. Great. Have a fine time. Doesn't want me to go, I hope. No, no, no. You don't have to go. Good. Yeah, but he wants to take Miss Olson. Oh, boo! <laughs> Hello, PB. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. How did your dinner party for Bronco's boss go? Don't call it my dinner party. How's that? That Dudley Hammond had the time of his life with my girl. My, my. He wants to take her out again tonight. Well, I won't say I told you so. All right, don't. But I did. (laughs) (laughs) I can't do a thing about it, PB. No, you've already done it. What I mean is, I can't jeopardize Bronco's job at the plant by punching his boss in the nose. Oh, my, no. And you don't want to jeopardize your nose, either. (laughs) Peavy, I could lick him with one hand tied. Well, it'd have to be his hand. (laughs) I've seen Mr. Hammond, and he didn't get his shoulders at a tailor shop. Yeah, wait a minute. Why don't I call Marie and just suggest she not go out with Hammond? If the refusal came from Marie, he couldn't blame Bronco. Mr. Gildersleeve, if you worked as hard in the water business as you do keeping up with your girls, you'd soon own Niagara Falls. Uh, just let me have the phone, baby. Very well. Uh, I'll cut off his water. Uh, sure, Marie hasn't given him a second thought anyway. Hello? Marie? Oh, yes, Dudley. Dudley! <laughs> now, see here. This is Throckmorton. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I was expecting another call from Dudley, Mr. Hammond. 
Another one? He was going to call back and tell me what time he'd pick me up tonight. Well, I, I thought I'd take you out to dinner myself. Wonderful. <laughs> Any other night. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> one more night out with Hammond and I won't have a chance. Marie, I don't like this. I didn't know it bothered you, Throckmorton. I thought we were doing this for Bronco. Well, that was last night. Mm-hmm. Well, if that's the way you feel, I imagine this will be my last date with Dudley. Well, I don't want to be possessive, but... Do you think you should even go out with him tonight? Oh, Throckmorton, it's going to be a harmless little evening at the Hickory House. Hickory House, huh? You trust me, don't you, Throckmorton? Well... You know how I feel about you, don't you, Throckmorton? (laughs) I guess I do. You didn't tell the young lady goodbye. I didn't have to. The way she's talking, it's hello again. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> Peavy, I just got an idea. Mrs. Peavy's out of town. Why don't you go with me to the Hickory House for dinner? Well, it's nice of you to invite me. I haven't been out with anybody but Mrs. Peavy for 35 years. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I want somebody to come with me so it won't look obvious when I take the booth right next to them. You're going to sit right next to them? You bet. This is Hammond's last stand, and I'm going to be sitting there like sitting bull. Awfully nice of you to bring us to the Hickory House, but you didn't have to do it. Oh, my pleasure, Bronco. Hey, slide right in here, Beebe. Very well. Besides, it affords me another opportunity to see Marie. Oh, yeah. Dudley, you always say just the right thing. As the French say, vous savez toujours quoi dire. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> what did she say, Mr. Gildersleeve? Quiet, Beebe. They don't know we're in the next booth. Well, it won't do us any good if they talk in French all evening. <laughs> <laughs> Bronco, you decided what to order. Oh, I'll leave that up to Mr. Hammond. So will I. Very well, let me look at the menu. Yeah, with these high petitions, I didn't realize we can hear everything they say. Think we better move, Petey? Mr. Gildersleeve, when you're sitting behind the home plate, why move out to the bleachers? <laughs> well, of course, I'm not eavesdropping. New York cuts, peasant under glass. What did he say? What did he say? He's just checking the menu. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's some music, Marge. Why don't we dance while Mr. Hammond's ordering dinner? Oh, shall we? Yes, of course. Go right ahead. Marie and I will sit this one out. Yeah, excuse us, please. We won't be long. Oh, don't hurry. I enjoy talking to Dudley. Maybe you shouldn't hear this, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Eat your shrimp cocktail, Peavy. It cost me a dollar. <laughs> You didn't care about dancing, did you, Marie? No, I really want to talk to you. I know it's early in our acquaintance, but perhaps we should be candid about things. Oh, boy, here it comes. She's going to tell him he doesn't have a chance. I don't understand, Marie. Good shrimp cocktail. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Dudley, perhaps I can explain it this way. Our meeting has been like a Cinderella story. Cinderella? I, the little immigrant girl, meet a big business tycoon. Oh, 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 oh. oh now, please listen. When did they bring the steak? <laughs> Confounded Peavy. After I met you last night, I could hardly sleep. And after you called today, I could hardly eat. I said to myself, Marie, what's happening to you? She's sure telling him. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? Oh, now, Marie, I I couldn't have hit you that hard. What about that fellow Gildersleeve? (laughs) You get honorable mention. (laughs) Throckmorton is very nice, but when a woman seriously considers a man, she looks for many things. She said you were very nice. I heard it. You are an unusually successful young man, Dudley. Am I being too candid? Oh, no. (laughs) No, indeed. I should know these things. (laughs) You know, I feel I can talk to you because I could see last night that your interest in me was more than casual. Peavy, she's practically proposing to him. (laughs) Well, maybe you'll be the best man. (laughs) What are you thinking, Dudley? 
Well, Marie, I, I hardly know what to say, except that... It, well, you're quite a woman. You mean it? I've never seen one like you. In, in fact, you have opened my eyes, and when I see an opportunity, I am a man of action. What's this? I'm sure you are. Excuse me while I make a phone call. Right, George, you're going to call a justice of the peace. Could be. Hey, come along, Phoebe. Let's duck out back and catch him at the phone booth. I'm right behind you. I'm going to stay there. <laughs> Well, he isn't going to treat me like this. We'll have a showdown. There he is. Hammond! Just a minute. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. I want to have a talk with you. Uh, some other time, Gildersleeve, I'm in a hurry. We'll talk right now. It's about Marie. That's why I want to get out of here. What? That woman is trying to marry me. You mean you're really running? If you'll get out of my way, look. Will you go back and tell her I had an emergency call from the plant? You have. Uh, take my place at the table, eat my dinner, I'll pay the check. Uh, I'm with Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Very good. Fine, fine. I I'll pay yours, too. Uh, go ahead, Gildersleeve. She is all yours. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> yeah, Marie has talked that way to me, but I didn't get scared. He did. Well, he just under doesn't understand women, or he wouldn't be running away. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. School's out, the children are hungry, and you're too busy to fuss. What can you do? Just set out some graham crackers and slice some Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food. Let the youngsters help themselves to a snack that's not only delicious, but hearty and wholesome, too. Just two ounces of Velveeta gives them more of milk's vital food values than an eight-ounce glass of milk. And remember, Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. For perfect snacks, keep stocked with Velveeta. Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, Bronco? I, uh, I think I should tell you it wasn't Miss Olson's idea to play up to the boss. Oh? No. I suggested she start talking about marriage. I knew he'd run. Well, thanks for doing me the favor. Frankly, I didn't care for your boss. I'm glad I won't be seeing any more of him. Oh, you don't like Mr. Hammond? Well, he... uh, Excuse me, Bronco. Hello? Mr. Gildersleeve, this is Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, Peavy. Uh, Mrs. Peavy wants to thank you for entertaining me while she was out of town. Oh, not at all. Marie and I were glad you didn't rush home. Well, Mrs. Peavy would like to have you two for dinner. Oh, Marie and me? Well, she didn't pay for my dinner. We want you and Mr. Hammond. Oh, for... <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Dick Crenna, Harley Bear, Gladys Holland, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. What goes into your favorite sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. <laughs> Now,
Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network. 